Today, I have in front of me an addition to the family, an addition to the Parker family. I already have my Parker 51, which is absolutely fabulous to write with. I have my Parker Depression Era Thrift Time, great writer. I absolutely love it, still pristine, wonderful. And adding to my Parker family, is my Parker Challenger. Look at that beautiful body, that green marbling. Oh, that is just gorgeous. I saw it. It reminded me so much of my Parker Depression era. I love how Parker makes that marbling, uh, rich color with their uh, fountain pens of the 1935 to maybe, um, what, 1941 era. And this little darling was made in 1935. So we have us a vintage vintage, which oh, I just, I just love it. This has the wide band, which is at the earlier version and this has the three ring band, which is a later version. This is a little shorter and smaller than the Parker Challenger, but I love how it feels absolutely in my hand. The ball is nice and still pristine for it to be, what, over 80 years old. It has a nice, still nice, crisp band it's not showing much, um, what is it, much fading on it or chipping. That is just, it's just gorgeous. I love the feel of this body. This is a button filler. So, of course, you know, we have the blind cap right here. This is a screw cap. And, of course, with uh, the Parkers, you have your diamond end with the little, the tip right here. Ugh just loved it. I just love how it feels and I just love the way it feels in my hand. This darling, like I said, is over 80 years old and look at that nib. That is still just a beautiful nib. I've been writing with it and testing it out. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous nib. Okay. All right. What color do I have in here for this? Well, I'm not the type of person, I've always said I don't really match the a color with a fountain pen. I match, and I, but don't get me wrong, I have on occasion matched a color with a fountain pen. So I never say what I'm never going to do because, you know, life has a way of, of always saying, oh, not wrong, you will do this or you will do that. So I never say what I'm never going to do, but as a generally, I don't match the ink with the color of the fountain pen. Today I have in here uh, the Diamine Majestic Blue, which is a beautiful, beautiful, rich color. But generally on my vintage fountain pens, I, I like to use Franklin Christoph's type ink or maybe Waterman because it's it's safer on the ink and I mean safer on the the sack and the um the mechanics basically of the fountain pen, the hardware of the fountain pen. And I want this darling to be around for another 80 years. I want my children to be able to maybe pass it down to their children. It does have just a touch of wear on it with this, uh, the clip band right here, which is showing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wear and tear, but I so am willing to forgive that and be, to overlook it. This pen is a great poster and some pens just look really look nice posted. I'm not a poster, but some pens when you write and you have it posted, it just gives you a, a different feel when you're writing with, especially when you know that you're writing with an 80 plus year old darling that who knows how many hands have um, written with this. Who knows what major document could have been signed with it, if it's an important document or uh, maybe a marriage license or something important that was signed with it. I always think about that when I have vintage things in my hands, whether it's a vintage watch or whether it's a vintage 
a vintage anything. I have a vintage um, pocket watch that my husband's father gave to him. And I want to have that restored so that we can pass that down to our children. But I just love the idea of it still has the chain on it. And well, I'm digressing and it's just, but vintage, I just love vintage. And the fact that we are basically um, using old things and helping the planet, which, you know, that's what we're all about. It's, we're all about that. And it's just anything vintage, anything classic like that, it's basically us doing our part. I did mention this darling as a button filler, so I wanted to take that blind cap off and show you that button filler. This is the original button filler that came with this fountain pen. It's a simple filling process, which I also like. Basically, you're pressing the button down, you're putting it in the ink, holding it for about 10 seconds in the ink, releasing holding it about 10 more seconds in the ink and basically not even holding 10 seconds in the ink when you initially fill the pen, you dip your pen in the ink, push the button down. You don't have to push it all the way. You don't have to push it very hard. You release and then still hold it in the ink for 10 seconds, take it out, wipe it off. And of course I always use my handy Mont Blanc nib cleaner, which of course is just a uh it's just a wonderful find they sell it on their website i think it's a pack of 10 or 8 for about 12 dollars eh, i can see that that's a lot when you could just use a box of tissue and wipe it off just fine but to each his own i like it i love how you can just dip your nib into the uh mobile cleaner move it around a little bit and you're ready to go and you don't have to worry about disposing of this you can use this i mean uh, just throwing it away or getting it out of the way like you do a tissue you can use this several times before you have to move on to a new one so that is fine okay when we come back we're going to write with our parker challenger Okay, we're back with our Parker Challenger and look at that. I did want to look at the comparison between the nibs of a later, my later Parker and this Parker Challenger. This one has a little bit of ink on it. But if you look at that, they both look just about the same size. If you can see that. This one, the Parker Depression Error in the uh, Marble Burgundy-ish. Is, I think it says a 68 on it, while the Parker Challenger has a 45 on the nib. So I think that's how you can also, that's how you date in reference to dating your, your Parkers. They both have that beautiful ebonite feet that's just absolutely still and nice, pristine shape there. And we're going to move that out the way. We are going to post this darling. I like how it looks in my hand when it's posted. It has that, has a look to it that I like. Okay, I have had it sitting out exposed to air for just a little bit, so it probably won't write right off the bat. But you're forgiven because you are over 80 years old. So you make exceptions for that. So we're going to see. Oh, there we go. It's writing just fine. Keep the writing samples short and sweet. Oh, nice flex. Roads lead to, that looks like an A, but okay. Rome, okay. I like that. The nice flex to it there. So let's zoom in just a little more. Yes. Keeping up with fast writing and reference to reverse writing. There is reverse writing, nice. And you could write just as well with the reverse writing as you can with the forward writing, the regular writing. Beautiful, okay. Nice and wet, let's put some more, let's see what else we can get. Eh, 
Let's try one more time here. See if we can, there we go. Nice, that is nice and wet. Okay, let's see what kind of flex we can get out of that. Yep, that is, move that over here. You can get a little flex with this old darling. There we go. That is lovely. There we go. All right, my newest addition. And thank you for watching, Writer Always Write. Join me again for my next video. God bless.